And then something I would do, and I'll just kind of show you an example. Um, I really like lighting the second story. Now in this case, they've, they've got the lights right here. Um, I think that makes sense here because it's uh, very steep. You don't want to light too much of the roof line, um, but you want to really take advantage of some of the second story peaks that you have on your house because that's where you can really make um, a landscape design pop. So what I would do in your case, um, I would uh, we have something called a gutter mount, which is this little stainless steel bracket, fits in the gutter, um, just screws in there. All our connections are waterproof, so you can make them right inside the gutter. I usually just run the wire <coughs> upper behind the downspout um, and then what I would do is I'd probably mount one of the up lights here that kind of angles towards the peak and another one here that angles towards the peak now hey guys it's Cal from the lighting doctor here I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips to learn more about landscape lighting go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like go and check out our try it before you buy it offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for the lighting doctor. Um, I'll show you a couple different lights. I mean this is kind of my dream property. Ideally I mean I'd love to have some lights here but I think at least if you have those garage ones you have um, some lighting and I'm going to focus on the other areas that I think you can really make it stand out. So <clears throat> The two lights you're going to primarily use are just um, kind of like you had said, some path and garden lights and some up lights like this guy here. Um, in some cases, I'm going to talk about uh, increasing the brightness on this a little bit. So these all come standard with a four watt LED lamp in them, uh, which is going to be really good for most areas of your property. But there's some areas where you're going to want to use something a little bit brighter. And I'll talk to you about that, where you'll want to upgrade to uh, what we call a 35 watt equivalent, but it's basically it's a the five watt LED lamp, so it's a little bit brighter, um, but it's just gonna push that light a little bit higher up in a couple areas. So the first thing I would do um, is across the front of the house here. I mean, I really, um, if you've watched any of our videos, you know I always talk about trying to light the entryway. Uh, so I definitely wanna try and get some accent lights kind of on the base of both of these pillars. One of the nice things too, that whenever you get one of our kits, it comes with um, something called an Instalight. So basically it's this little battery pack that you can just go and plug the lighting fixture into, and then you can really play around with the placement and where you want it. Um, because without seeing exactly how much room here, I got a pretty good idea, um, but you want to play with that anyway. So you can just plug it in with the batteries, go place it where I'm talking about, and then you can see what light you look, or what look you like the most. There we go. Uh, but I would probably try and have that kind of at the base of the column here. It, it doesn't even hurt if you had a little bit of the corner here, maybe 12 inches back or so, and almost even had it angling a little bit. So a little bit of that angled light is going to catch this top peak. Um, I would do that on both sides here to really make that entryway stand out. Um, back here, I feel like you're going to want to light. A lot of times what happens is this end up being a bit of a dark spot. So what I would probably do in an area like that is I'd actually use a wash light as opposed to an up light. Um, a wash light, very similar to an up light, but it's a wider angle, lot softer light. So why that's good back there is because um, if you have that here, you can even bring it back a little bit more and it's gonna do a nicer job of just lighting the brick from down below. It's not gonna be too bright in the window um, and it's gonna give you some backlight in this area so it doesn't become a big dark spot. And I think you can probably um, do the same along, um, but along this wall over here to kind of help highlight this one so it's not um, overpoweringly bright uh, but it's still gonna help light that a little bit and then what I would do um, with that is I would sprinkle some path lights in between so say for example you have your wash light here I might throw a path and garden light here and here uh, you have an accent light here you have an accent light here and then I might try and get another one or two path lights in here and I would try and get an up light on this tree and even though this tree is smaller I would still use an up light and that's another reason why I love uh, these lights one it's I honestly feel it's the best bang for your buck uh, when you feel the quality of this light uh, what you're paying for and what you're getting um, is phenomenal but I like these as opposed to some of the integrated fixtures where they have like a board a chipboard built in because now as that tree grows in the front you can start out with a smaller bulb but as it gets bigger you can always increase um, the bulb, you can just put a bigger bulb in. So instead of having to go replace a fixture, you can just make that light brighter um, as your landscape grows. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do in the front area there. And then something I would do, and I'll just kind of show you an example. 
Um, I really like lighting the second story. Now, in this case, they've they've got the lights right here. Um, I think that makes sense here because it's uh, very steep. You don't want to light too much of the roof line, um, but you want to really take advantage of some of the second story peaks that you have on your house because that's where you can really make um, a landscape design pop. So what I would do in your case, um, I would uh, we have something called a gutter mount, which is this little stainless steel bracket fits in the gutter, um, just screws in there. All our connections are waterproof, so you can make them right inside the gutter. I usually just run the wire <clears throat> up or behind the downspout. Um, and then what I would do is I'd probably mount one of the up lights here that kind of angles towards the peak and another one here that angles towards the peak. Now, something to consider uh, on all the up lights you're going to use is you almost want them shining more upright than at the house. Um, and what that does, it produces a softer light, not as much, um, not as much of a hot spot. Um, so I'd probably have two of those there. And then on this window here, um, you could play with, I mean, in a perfect world, I'd probably have one on each corner that's kind of shining up on both sides here. Again, by having it a little bit more upright, it's going to get less of the shingles in the roof. Um, or you could just have one in the middle that's really more directed just at this top peak. Uh, and that's going to do a nice job of lighting that. So you might have three of those lights to really make that section stand out. Um, and then that's going to uh, flow nicely as we go on to this side of the house where um, yeah, so on the side of the house here, it's where I still like, even though you have some uh, garden beds and stuff here, I still like trying to highlight the house as much as possible uh, in combination with some path lights. Because again, if I go back to this example, you can see how over here, even though it's just siding, by getting that light up to kind of the top peaks, um, especially around windows and, and uh, the white frames and stuff really stand out. So that's why I like still using some up lights but with a combination of some path lighting in an area like this. And you can see here how it's a, it's a good contrast between some up lighting on some structures and then some path lighting kind of in between. So it'd be very similar um, on your house. So what I would do over here is again, I would probably look at, um, I would have an up light here for sure in the middle. This is where I would increase that um, beam intensity to that 35 watt equivalent. So I'm kind of getting light all the way to this top peak. Um, it depends how much you like that. Um, that look, I would definitely have one here. I would almost have three along uh, this side of the wall, but I think at least one in the middle. Um, I would probably have another one over here kind of between the windows that really make this window frame stand out. And then I think if you had one here and then you had probably another one over here that kind of highlights this section, um, that would do a really nice job. And then I would use those path and garden lights in between where I have my up lights. So again, you have this lit, so I might have a path and garden light in here. I might have another one here. I might have two in here um, and then kind of same thing along this side where I might have two of the standard up lights on both sides of the windows and then a couple path and garden lights kind of in between and it creates that nice balance of some up lighting um, but then also uh, highlighting the bed that you have down below so um, I think that covers uh, most areas Jeff I mean if you have any questions uh, you need any help customizing a kit you can always reach out we do that all the time you can also go on the website um, add the different lights and stuff to your cart a system like that that size um, you could easily just fit it on a transformer kit like this uh, comes with a transformer wire all your connections um, you can always go and add the gutter mounts as well um, and play around uh, again use the coupon code to get some extra discounts here for the next couple days but if you want us to just kind of customize based on those suggestions or let us know what you liked and what you didn't like we can put something together for you uh, and that always works well too. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions yet, please feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help. It's just uh, another cool example. If you can see this top peak here where we used a couple gutter mounts and just focus them in uh, on that top peak, um, really turns out second story peaks, definitely something you wanna focus on if you can get the lights up there. Uh, definitely brings your landscape lighting plan to the next level. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.